Sometimes I think of my mind as a machine, but not always as a bread slicing machine. It makes it easier to explain to people what is going on inside of it. I make this noise when there is too much information coming into my head from the outside world. It is like when you are upset and you hold the radio against your ear and you tune it halfway between two stations and all you get is white noise and then you turn the volume right up and then you know you are safe because you cannot hear anything else. to discuss the book he wrote based on encounters from his childhood, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. So Christopher, what was your inspiration for this book? Well, my therapist, Sherman, she told me that I need to write a book about my adventures when I found a dead dog in my neighbor's yard and that I wanted to find it like I thought it was a mystery, so I did my detective work and I wanted to find out who killed it. So, I, as I understand, a lot of people were angered with you for trying to find out this mystery. And at one point you got arrested. Can you tell me about that, please? Um, I don't like him touching this. Bad boys, bad boys. Uh, excuse me, sir. What is your name? Young boy. So Christopher, you seem to really like math. Can you tell me about your math philosophy? Well, I really like equating things and anything that doesn't equate doesn't exist. And I like doing graphs and working with numbers and pie charts and like times tables and I like just making everything work together and work out. Seems like a very... Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And this is a map of everything and everywhere. And the future is on the right and the past is on the left and the gradient of the line C is the speed of light. But we can't know about the things which happen in the shaded areas even though some of them have already happened. But when we get to F, it will be possible to find out things that happen in the lighter areas P and Q. And this means that time is a mystery and not even a thing and no one has ever solved the puzzle of what time is exactly and, and it is like being lost in the desert except you can see the desert because it's not a thing and this is why I like timetables because they make sure you don't get lost We are here today with Mr. Boone, Christopher's dad Hello So Mr. Boone, um, you raised Christopher on your own? Y yes, I'm very proud of this very proud to call him my son. That's great. Did you say you washed your clothes, took care Wash of them? Wash his clothes, Bed. give him the bath, the whole lot. It's very good. It's very loving of you. And you supported his love of math? Of course. Uh, and anything, all that stuff he does in school, it's beyond me, really. It's just, he's amazingly intelligent. Did, you, did it ever bother you, his tics, you know, his behavioral problems? I try, I try to convince myself that his, emo, his uh, like any emotion I was feeling, of any anger, uh, that it was, it was just ridiculous to feel it at him. And I love my son, so it was very easy um, to, to let it go. So I, um, my wife had some issues with that, but um, it was a lot easier for me and her when she was when she was around. I'm sure he appreciates very much all the love and support you've given him. And as I understand from reading this book, Curious Incident, you had hidden letters from Christopher's mother in your room. What was your motivation for taking such an action? I don't know. I, okay. 
so with the letters, he was um, really. I, I want. I didn't. I want. I, I was afraid he wouldn't understand what was going on. It was a, it was a really in, intense situation. I was having a lot of trouble going through it myself, and I thought, well, with Christopher's uh, syndrome or whatever, I just he wouldn't. I I only did it out of love for my son. Do you regret anything that you did? I I'm starting to regret the letters. Then I stopped reading the letter because I felt sick. Mother had not had a heart attack. Mother had not died. Mother had been alive all the time. And father had lied about it. I don't have Uh, I like to think so. Uh, he's not a very forgetful person. But he's, he's willing to accept and try to forgive. Well, thank you for your time. Lots of things are mysteries, but it doesn't mean that there isn't an answer to them. It just means the scientists haven't found the answer yet.